Are you wondering what the fall is going to be like uh, when it's time to go back to school? You're not alone. Everybody is thinking like, what will it be like? Will I be teaching remotely? Will I be teaching two different classes, AM, PM? Will I have all my kids in a, in a room and get rid of all the things in my room and have the desks distanced enough? And will I have plexiglass around each desk? Will the kids be wearing masks? You know, what is it going to be like? And right now there's no answers. But the good news is, because out of all bad, there's good, uh, teachers are very flexible and they can make do with whatever situation they are dealt. So I am confident, I have faith in all of my colleagues that whatever the situation is, they will rise to the occasion because kids are involved. I'm Lynn Rule from MathRack, and in all of the math groups that I belong to, I'm hearing another common concern that's happening if we go back to school. And that is, how am I going to keep all of these math manipulatives and things that we use to teach math clean for the kids to use over and over? How am I going to do that? I, I, I don't have enough to give them all everything of what I have and where would they store it? And it would, it's just going to be like, it could be a fiasco. So I'm hoping the purpose of this video is to give you some ideas on what you could do in your classroom that might alleviate some of those concerns about cleanliness. And the bonus is it's going to save you a ton of time because you're not going to spend time te uh, provisioning and passing out and collecting and all of that because the kids are going to have what they need at their hands at all times. And remember, I'm focusing on math and I'm going to really try not to start teaching as I go. So the focus is some tips to keep the things clean that we need for to teach math in the primary grades, but it's adaptable to, to really any grade. And I'm going to start off with my class list. I'm going to put my class list in an alphabetical order, either by last name or first name, and I'm going to assign each child a number. Okay, so we call that number their magic number, even though there's really nothing magical about it at all. <laughs> okay, so if my magic number is 12, the things that I am going to now be responsible for are going to have the number 12 on them. Uh, in the classroom, my hook where I hang my coat is going to be 12. It's not going to have my name. I'm going to have the magic number. All right, and the benefit of that as a teacher is I use this year after year after year, so I don't have to relabel everything. So again, we're just starting with math. The first thing I'm going to do once we have given each child a uh, magic number is I'm going to give them a binder, or this might be on their supply list, and it could be a little one inch, three inch binder. Notice we have the number 12 there, and I have the number 12 there if I'm if I'm going to depending on how I'm going to store them if I don't want to use this three ring binder I can also just use the three pronged plastic ones but the key is it has to have the prong so I can put plastic sleeves inside and inside each plastic sleeve there'll be some a math activity that they are familiar with so for instance in my three ring binder my first page might be um, 20 frame and on the back of that is an empty number line depending again on what my activity is my next page might be um, just if I'm doing part part holes of a number and let's say I'm working with seven and then I would put the seven at the top with a dry erase marker and I might use these two colored face discs whoopsie, and have seven of them toss them what do I have five and two I record it five and two equals seven and I have all the different combinations of seven so I might also in here I might instead of writing on it, I might have like ten pages of that in there and just pull out a page and do it if, depending again on what my purpose is and my target is for that activity I might have things that are evergreen games in here that I could play with dice and they can do it by themselves so that's another thing so all in here, I have different activities that I would do in my classroom, and after they're taught, put it in their binder so they can use it whenever I indicate that it, it, it is appropriate. 
So now you're thinking, well, where am I gonna keep those discs? Where am I gonna keep everything? Another thing I can put in my three ring binder is this pencil bag, which again has the number 12 on it. So it can be in or out of this. So I, I have highlighters, post-it notes. I use mechanical pencils so they don't have to use a pencil sharpener, but I, that might be a mini lesson on pressure on pencils, right? And I might, whatever I need, there's some more um, dry erase markers in here if I want to do some color coding things on here. Because if I do use the three ring binder and I do use this, I will need an eraser of some sort to erase my work. They also have crayons that work as well. And you might find a, nif a different thing because sometimes it is hard to write on the plastic, but sometimes not. But where am I gonna store it? I'm having each child have a recipe box, just like this, made out of plastic. They're like a dollar at Ikea. I give them the number, it's not theirs to keep. I keep this for many, many years, over and over again. So they're gonna put their pen in there. They don't get another one until it's out and they can't share their erasers in there. And then we were talking about the colored discs. I have 20 of them in a Ziploc bag and you can get these bags at Uline or you can get them at the dollar store or Target, whatever. And I'm gonna put them in here. They're responsible for those 20. Now, as I'm teaching, I might be adding or if they're at home, I might give them various supplies in here. And as I'm teaching remotely, they'll take it out of their box. They get, this is something that they could have at home as well, right? So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna have dice. And these are, these are pit dice. Again, I have the number 12 on here. So these belong to them. I have five so I can differentiate the game. Some of my kids can only handle two. Some of them can handle five if I'm doing parts of 10 or parts of seven or whatever the case may be the game that might use that. But I'm also gonna include, and these are sponge dice just to give a variety. Again, number 12. And I have five of them too so I can do that differentiation as well. And they fit nicely into my bag. Maybe you're gonna do some activities with place value the place value cards. I think these are from Christina Tondable, Build Math Minds. Again, number 12, and I have the whole set in here so I can work on place value. Maybe there's a game, like if I'm doing the Double Decker Bus by Kathy Fosno, these cards are here that mimic, or um, not mimic, but they're like, they're like a bus, a Double Decker Bus, but they're really the math rack, and I can find matching different combinations of that so I can work on um, building that structure in my mind, creating that image of what numbers are using this game. Maybe I want a number line, and this goes up to 100 vertically and horizontally. This is by Box Cards, and I can have this one with just a rubber band around it, and again, it has a number 12 on it, and they can work on it with their desk. Another thing I could put in here is a number path to represent my thinking as I'm doing it concretely on my math rack. And so this would be my rep, my part of, for representation. Also to build those relationships that I need to become automatic with my facts. So I can just gently roll that up. And again, you might have to model how to do this with your kids and then use the paper clip and or a rubber band and it fits in there. Now, I still have plenty of room in here, whoopsie, maybe not, plenty of room in here to add more things but that gives you an example of a lot of different materials that I can keep, the kids are not sharing, and they are clean. So, once I have all of that, of course I'm gonna be using my math rack. And this is my math rack 20, but I can also use my five or my 10. They can be easily wiped down to be disinfected. Everything is safe. I wouldn't get the rods wet because they are galvanized steel, but still, um, you can wipe them and they'll dry. Easy to clean. What I like about our model is that it is flat. I could just stick it right into their desk and all is good in the hood there. So they can pull that out. And I leave it in there all the time because uh, different things come up in the day where I need to use a concrete model for math, concrete model for math. So I can have the binder, the box and my math rack inside their desks. If you have this model of the wreck and rack, which most of them do, we're the only one that has it flat, you have to be careful because the wood will absorb the moisture, but you can, you know, wipe them. Um, and you have to be careful of the type of metal it is. 
Most of them now have acrylic beads, but some of the older models are wooden, so you have to be careful with that as well. And some of you also might make the math rack, which is awesome. I always wanted to have these at home for my parents to use so I'd have a parent connection. I can't wipe these clean, but again, it's individual, it's theirs to, to use. And it could be one that you send home if you are having class, you know, get to be in your classroom. This could be a connection, a home connection as well. So there are some ideas for math. If I don't have room in my desks or my kids are not sitting at desks, then I can give them a tote. Again, I got this at Ikea, I think for 99 cents. I don't know what the price is now. I use them for, I don't even wanna tell you how many years, probably 15 years. They could design their own card to label it. What's a little fun, okay? But if that, does, if that bothers you, that that card's on there and it's gonna rip off, then you can always use your marker and put a you know, 12 there so they can identify their tote put all their things in their tote and put the tote wherever you want, under the desk, on the shelf, whatever works for you. I am gonna throw in another little tidbit because I know kids need to do independent reading. So I had my kids have their bag of books like this. Now, am I gonna wipe down every book? I don't know how I possibly can keep doing that, but if I have their bag of books here, this bag will at least keep them somewhat germ-free and on the bag is a magic number. This one is 29, I don't have the 12th bag with me and, um, and then this is Velcro, but you can use Ziploc bags as well. So I can stick this in my tote with the binder, with the box and I would be good to go and I could add any other materials that I need for other classes and keep it nice, organized, and individually so it's not mingling with other kids' things. So I'm hoping some of those ideas might help you in your classroom or give you an idea to springboard it into something even better, but it's definitely going to be a challenge for us and, and the kids, but I am sure we can rise to the occasion. So remember, how can we help? and what can MathRec do for you. We are always here to serve our teachers and our parents and of course our students. Thanks so much.